Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to go over something we uh, played with uh, a few weeks ago, and that was a, a, an exercise for strengthening your legs and allowing for more opportunity for sung because your legs are stronger. A lot of the problems that people have in executing the uh, a form come from the fact that they really don't trust the power of their of their legs. Even if they have adequate power, there's still old programs which keep uh, keep the hips locked up and uh, prevent you from getting really sung kwa. And so this uh, exercise, the one we did a few weeks ago, and what we're, the the amplification we're going to do tonight is a way of of daily practice to help increase that power, and it will serve you in every aspect of your life. So let's uh, let's get on that uh, right away. Okay, you got that, Richard. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So so we're going to get on that right away, and uh, why don't you stand up? And if you can, grab something. Uh, to hold on to a chair, table, a wall, anything, because that's a key part of the of learning how to do this is to to have support. Because what happens is whenever you try to do it without support, then there's a tendency to to lock up the the hips, and even the the hip that's not being loaded tends to tends to freeze up because it's afraid. Uh, you're going to fall over. It's afraid you're not going to be able to support yourself, and it's happening at a pre-conscious level. It's not. It's not a conscious fear. It's something that is that is happening, you know, at at, at that physical level in your in your body mind. So we're going to uh, the uh, the exercise. What we what I showed you a few weeks ago was to actually get something like a table or a chair or something like that. You set your knee, you feel the, feel the ball of your foot, but you don't have to put your weight in the ball of your foot. In fact, it's even a little bit better to have your, your knee right directly over your heel for this one, just for this particular exercise. And so we oh, can actually you. work, what we're working on here is the, uh, the vastus, vastus medialis uh, on your thigh. So we want to just, you, you pick up the, your heel and your back foot, and you're just lightly on the toe there. So then as you sink down, you're, releasing down, right? You're getting sung straight down. There's no turn here. And then you come back up. And so what we're doing is we're, you don't have to go down very far. You can go down just like that, just, just enough to, to get the sense of being really fully loaded in that left leg in this case, you know, and you sink down. And so there is a, it, notice that it's a yin, feeling you're sinking down and you're you're doing that and then you expand and come back up okay so that's a uh, that was the exercise we did and it uh, we want to take that a step further now okay because the three ways we can do with the we can go with 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 this sung kwa here we can go straight down boom notice that the knee is is set it doesn't move you go straight down, release down, and then you come back up, right? Or you can go turn to the outside and notice that I want to keep my center vertical, right? What I'm not doing is I'm not leaning as I go in, right? And that means I have to really center my weight and I'm spiraling down and releasing here, folding at the inguinal crease. And then Come back up, right? So we're releasing down. So this is a little bit different than than the usual qua exercise I do, where we're down and turning, um, and oh, turning uh, horizontally. This one we're actually rising up, and this is specifically to load up and be able to train the muscles to be able to count on those muscles. Okay, so here we go. So the where we're going to do this now is. You still want to have you know, it doesn't require a lot of pressure on the uh, on on the yeah, your hands, you, but you want to have the uh, yeah. have some contact there. Just have a uh, have a uh, sense of of 
you know, security about it. So first we're gonna go, we're going to spiral down to the left. So we're gonna release here, we're gonna spiral down to the left. The knee does not move. You wanna keep your, 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 your spine, your center vertical, and then you come back up, right? And then you spiral down to the right. Okay, so again, we're releasing that back leg. We're loading up the left leg and we spiral down. Through, and you're sort of sinking down in that. You want to hold on to something so you have that feeling of security. And then you come back up. And now we're going to go straight down. Okay. And just release into that and really get comfortable with that and then come back up. And then spiral down to the left. And come back up. Spiral down to the right. And come back up. And straight down. And we'll do one more on this leg. Spiral down to the left. Come back up. Spiral down to the right. Come back up. And straight down. And come back up. And those were, it's a very sung, very yin kind of feeling. You're releasing down and you're, you're not pushing away from the ground. You're actually, ah, uh, you're settling into it. Now we're going to go to the other leg. Okay, right ball, set the right knee. Okay. And this time, you know, you pick up the left heel. There we go, good. You spiral down, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, but you don't want the knee to move, and then you're gonna spiral down to the right. You're releasing down and feel into that. You're sinking down and you're holding on to something so you don't fall over, you don't have to tense up. You can release that back leg and then come up and spiral down to the left. This is an inside turn. You want to keep that knee straight. You want to keep your spine straight as you do that. And then turn back and, and come back. Good. And then straight down. And up. And spiral down to the right. And up. Spiral down to the left. Releasing. Sung. And up. And straight down. And up. One more. Spiral down to the right. And up. Spiral down to the left. And up. And straight down. And up. Good. Okay, grab a seat. So even though we just did a few on each leg, you can feel it. There's there's the the fact that it is a a yin kind of uh, energy. It awakens a different kind of feeling in the leg than if you're just say just doing a squat. Any questions or clarifications needed on that? Everybody got that? That feel good? Okay, you're good on that stand. Great. Good, good, yes. good, good, good. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so let's uh, go on to uh, what I would like to do is now go and do the reclaiming lost territory exercises. We haven't done that in a while. And I want to do it with incorporating a lot of the stuff that we have been practicing and, and working on. So we get that and, and see that because these exercises are done specifically to inculcate these jins and, and to do it by creating a structure that supports the, the expression of the energy. So, and, mm -hmm. and as we do that, it has the, 
the beneficial effects of actually allowing us to get more range of motion, more confidence in our structure, and eliminate certain negative patterns which cause pain and injury over time. So let's uh, let's stand up and. Yeah, you want to go to uh, to uh, solo on that? Sorry. There we go. Good. There we go. Speaker view. That's what I meant. Okay, here we go. So we're going to begin. Put your right foot forward. There. Good. Put your right foot forward and set your right knee and pick up your left heel. You want to. You're really about 99% in that right leg. So you're really feeling that. You want to have your central pillar. So you know what? Let's let's just establish the three pillars first so we just have it as a, a point of reference. So begin, feel the balls of your feet and unlock your knees. Reach with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate, tuck in the chin. Reach with the elbows, reach with the index fingers, feel that, feel the energetic coherence. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Feel your coccyx reaching down. So you're feeling the pull there between your coccyx and the crown of your head. Between your knee one at the crown of your head and the Wei Lu at the, at the coccyx. And just feel the energy of that for a moment. So step forward with the right foot. Feel the ball of the foot, push your right knee. Set, that, set the right knee over the ball of the foot. Pick up the left heel and establish your central equilibrium in this posture. And that is reach with the crown of the head, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate, relax your lower back. Feel the verticality, feel that central pillar. Reach with your elbows, fingers. Good. And now we're going to feel the ball, set the knee, and spiral down to the right. And this is a little different than the exercise we just did. You're spiraling down. You're keeping your central pillar. You're keeping all the weight in that, in that front leg. And then you turn back to center without bobbing up, without popping up. So we're spiraling down, releasing the quad, spiraling down to the right releasing and then turning the waist. So this is, we're, we're the, initiated by the Yao and turning to the waist and then spiral down to the right. Still the same kind of sung and turn back to center. Now feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left. Release down, you're opening up the inguinal crease here and the, uh, uh, on the inside. And turn, spiral down to the left, releasing down, sinking, and turn. Spiral down to the left. And turn. Good, now go to the, the left foot, pick up your front heel, your right heel, establish your central equilibrium. To the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, reach for the crown, and spiral down to the left. Turn. Spiral down to the left. So here we're releasing the quad, now we're turning the waist, coming back to center. Spiral down to the left. Back to center. 
Okay, shift your feet up. No, we're gonna go to the right. I'm sorry. There we go. Stay keep it the back, the left foot's back still. We're gonna feel the ball, set the knee, and spiral down to the right and turn. Spiral down to the right. Releasing down, feeling the sung and turn. One more, spiral down to the right. And just hold that for a second. Just feel the energy that cascades through the system. Whenever we plug into the big G and we open up the, the qua like this and back to center. Now we're going to go to the left foot. Okay, left foot forward, pick up the right foot, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. We're releasing down and turn, reach with the the yao, good. Spiral down to the left. And turn. Spiral down to the left. And turn. Feel the energy there. Now spiral down to the right. And turn. Spiral down to the right. Turn. Spiral down to the right. Turn. To the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Pick up the, the left heel. Okay, so we're going into the right leg. We're going to spiral down to the right. And turn. Spiral down to the right. Turn. As we spiral down, spiraling down, there's a releasing going on there. It's not a forcing. You're not forcing your body to turn. You're just going, allowing it to relax and sink down into that, into the right wall there and spiral down to the left. There's a releasing, a relaxing and turn. And spiral down to the left. And turn. Spiral down to the left. Turn. Good. Bring your feet parallel. And then spiral down to the right, into the right leg and turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. And turn, spiral down to the right. Good, feel the right ball, set the right knee, fall down to the right and turn. Fall down to the left and turn. Good, now bring your right foot forward and you're gonna shift into your back leg. You're gonna feel the left ball, spiral down to the right and turn. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and turn. And pick up, you put your left foot forward. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left and turn. Spiral down to the, oh, I'm sorry, and then right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right and turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left and turn. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right and turn. Good, and bring it back to center. Now just allow yourself to be sung kwa and not move. Just explore that for a moment. Feel what that feels like to relax in your hip joints. Allow your lower back to, to soften, to drop, your coccyx to drop. And feel the central equilibrium, feel the big chi as we're doing this. Good. Okay, next we're going to open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull just by lifting the chin and dropping it and lifting it and dropping it. So we are lengthening all those tissues at the back of your neck that have gotten shortened over time and creating space there 
at the Jade Kuno gate. Good. And reach out your right hand and reach your neck to the left, your head to the left, opening the opening the neck, and then move your arm around and find where it does you the most good. You're stretching out, you're releasing tension in the shoulders, in the neck, in the arm, you're opening and creating more and more space there. Yes, opening the shoulder joint. Good, and we're gonna go the other side. Reach out with your left arm and reach with the head. And open. Uh, you can rotate the arm. So let's see what that does. Each of us has our own individual challenges on this with the arm neck connection. And so you wanna, you wanna feel into that. Where does that do me good? Okay. Bring both arms up and just really just kind of open up there. Open up the chest, open up the shoulders, and really just feel into that expansion there. Good. And so now uh, roll the head. And explore the range of motion in your neck. You're reaching with the crown of your head as you do this. So you can do this as strictly mechanical exercise, but you can also do it as a way of opening up more energy, opening up the kinks in the hose. Roll it the other way. Reach with, reach with the crown of your head and you're opening the jade pillow gate. You're also creating space between the vertebrae by releasing. Good, now. Uh, turkey head, you push your face forward and pull it back. Yeah. Uh, okay, now stand up straight. And we're going to release the spine and roll down, releasing one vertebra at a time. Use your breath to release muscular tension. Keep the spine st stacked up. If you release one, keep the ones underneath it stacked up. Knees are bent. You're reaching with the crown of your head. Lengthening the spine from the coccyx up to the crown. Relaxing tension in your back. Unkinking the hose. Keep your hands on your legs as you go down. That keeps your keeps the uh, the body dropping straight down. Now straighten your knees and continue to drop, releasing. Relax and let go. Good. Bend your knees, sit down and come up, stacking up the vertebrae as you come up.
and bring your hands up to center, open and arch your back, breathe, let your arms just hang, open up the shoulders, opening up the back, opening up the chest, and come back, round your back, and then open, actually it's arch your back and back and round and arch. Inhale, as you come up and arch, exhale. Okay, knocking on the door, opening the shoulders, opening the, the chest. Uh, let them hang, just let your arms hang, get into that central equilibrium. Reach with the crown, feel the balls of your feet. Reach, reach out with your elbows, softly rounded. Feel the fingers and just let your arms, shoulders unwind. Uh, big circles, inhale, arch your back and exhale, round your back. Sink down and inhale. And exhale, round the back, sink. Inhale. And exhale. Yeah, reverse it. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, round your back. Inhale, arch. And exhale. Bring your hands down, let them hang. Feel your arms unwind. You're creating a form there. It's not completely collapsed, but in that form you're sung. You're letting the muscles relax letting things unwind, the tissues to find their own place, their play optimum state. Good, now bring your hands up, reach out to the sides, drop the elbows, relax your shoulders, reach out with the fingers, palms down. And slowly, small circles. You're moving from the rotator cuff, from the shoulders. Breathe as you do this, relax your shoulders. Reach, reach with your fingers, reach with your elbows. Feel the tensegrity. You should feel this in your feet. It's not just an arm exercise, it's a whole body exercise. Even though we're 
we're moving from the rotator cuff, it's actually as a conduit rather than a, uh, an initiator of the, of the movement. Yeah, palms up and go the opposite direction. Reaching out, relaxing. Hands come down. Let them hang. Feel the arms unwind. Feel the chi in your, throughout the whole system, you'll notice it probably mostly in your, in your hands, in your fingers. Uh, you might notice in your feet and throughout your body. Where feel the make sure you're feeling the the three pillars and plugging into the big chi as we do this. So as I mentioned before, this is not just a mechanical exercise. It's not just calisthenics here. We are creating structures that allow the energy to flow where we want it to flow. And we're clearing the impediments to the smooth flowing of the energy. Feel the fullness in your body right now. Good. With the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, sink into the right leg, and step in with the left foot. Inhale, deep breath, and disappear the chi. Throw it away. Empty out and allow the big chi to come through. Release and clear. And just pause for a moment and just feel into the emptiness, the stillness. Good. Take a seat, please. I encourage everyone to take a look at the work we were doing a year ago on that. The videos are still on, on YouTube. And uh, take a look at that. We, we, we're doing that for a number of sessions. So uh, you, know, you can take a look and see which one uh, speaks to you. But the, uh, I think it's important to, you know, to be able to, to mark the progress made you know, in, in, the, in the past year. And um, yeah, so any questions or thoughts, comments? Scott. Uh, first, a con first a suggestion. When we're doing the um, exercises where we're arching the back and rounding the back, you know, where we're moving around. Big circles? Big circles and also when we're doing this one, uh -huh. doing this, I find it really helpful to lead with the elbows doing those. Yes, good, thank you. I, I did not mention that, but you're absolutely right. And I thank you, I appreciate for making that, making that note. That is absolutely, uh, um, absolutely right. So definitely, thank you, that, that, that's a good point. And um, a question, uh, when we're doing, when you're doing, when we're doing, you know, rolling the head, when you find an area that's, you know, 
particularly like, you know, when I turn around, I'm good except for one spot on this side, you know, on one side. Yeah, Do you yeah. recommend just kind of hanging out in that spot or something? Absolutely, or? absolutely. And, and nibble at it, you know, as you're going around, you kind of, uh, you kind of work it a little bit and just kind of do it. You're not forcing anything because, you know, your neck's kind of, kind of uh, vulnerable there, but you want to, you want to gently release. So you're exploring that territory and you're saying, okay, buddy, what do you want to do for me? You know, and how much you're willing to let go today? And, and uh, so great, great points, both of those. Thank you. Cool. Sharon, you're on mute. There you go. Um, I need a tip. Okay. Okay. I need a tip for the elbow gin because yes. I feel when we're, we had those couple of times when we were just focusing on the relaxation and I feel like my elbow gin is tensing the arm up a little bit. Okay. So, um, can so you I, show I need me what a, that looks a like? Tip there, uh, how to can, how to get it? Can you show me what that looks like um, so I can? Uh... Well, it's... Yeah. Okay. So does that feel tense to you now? A little bit. Yeah, I feel the tension here. Okay. So, and, and the tension in the elbow or in the shoulder? Elbow. Okay, so there should be zero tension in the elbow. So uh, good. Uh, uh, so the, the, elbow, the arm should just, just be released. And uh, if there's any kind of tension in the elbow area that, you know, the muscles around the elbow, then it's, probably holding the, the hand or wrist too tightly because the, the elbow itself is not really um, going to tense up. It's the muscles around it. So it's like what you're doing below the elbow, you know, is to, you want to, you want to get, right, get, get this guy loose and floppy. So you're, you're, you're nice and, and relaxed here. Cause if, if this, if the, the forearm and the hand are, are nice and relaxed, the elbows, there's nothing going on there. So the, the uh, but it, where people, most people get into a problem with elbow gin is they, they think lift the elbows, which then tenses up the shoulders, which then of course, once you tense up the shoulders, you're gonna feel it all the way down the arm. So the, the key and it's something that we've talked about before is you practice it by just securing the arm against your, your body and just reach down with the elbow and open up the shoulder joint. So there's a lengthening. It's not just a, the uh, arm is not just going limp. There's a lengthening there. You're reaching with that elbow and it opens up the shoulder. So there's creates tensegrity in the, uh, in the arm which is what you want, but it's uh, it's not the the muscular tension that creates that you know that feeling of being jammed up. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I can't. You're you're on mute. There you go. Yes, yes, it all makes uh, perfect sense. I think that my issue is that I'm trying to reach with my elbow. <coughs> Oh, that, that, what you want to do is you, you do want to reach with your elbow, but you don't want to lift the elbow. So it, it, okay. it may help to, I mean, it helps to just put your hand on it and, and just kind of reach with the elbow. So you're reaching down with the elbow. You can reach out with your elbow. So there's, so the direction whereas lifting the elbow you know, is, is a different kind of feeling. So you're extending outward rather than upward. Scott. Yeah, I've, I've had sort of this issue too. And what I, what I figured out was you always want to be reaching your elbow 
away from the shoulder. Yes. Right? So if you're reaching down, you're reaching, but even if you're reaching out, you're still reaching like, you're creating a tension between the shoulder and the and the wrist and uh, elbow. Not a tension, but a tensegrity. Yeah, pulling, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that that extension, the ability to to create more space there in the, in the arm, which then mm, it pulls back the bowstring. So, Dennis, you had some. Yeah, um, you know, that's a really good suggestion about reviewing the earlier classes. I started doing that and uh, I've made notes. I'll have to send them to you. I've, I've actually, oh, I've, I've recorded, I've, I've written down all the start times of the various exercises. I've gone through like about the first 20 classes so far. Oh, cool. And I've, and, and I've it's really, I'm finding things I missed the first time. And it's a really, I, I'm, I'm surprised at the progress I've made, how much how much how much I've really I've really advanced in it and um, you know how much more I'm discovering you know just the other day I and I guess I've always known it I was I, I was carrying bags of groceries up the stairs and I had two handfuls of bags and I guess I've always known this but I, I reached out for the handrail and I couldn't you know, I couldn't grip the whole handrail and I just put one finger on it and all at once I was coherent <laughs> I had my balance and, and, and you know, I, 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 I guess I've always known this <laughs> it was a real aha moment, you know, and I, I could just right up the slide my finger on the railing. You know? <laughs> That's terrific. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah. That one finger, it's 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 very interesting. You just that one finger, if you place it, if you meet with that one finger, the whole system, whole system yeah. gets more more powerful, more, more rooted, more body, balanced. More strength, everything. Balance everything. Yeah. Absolutely. We've done exercises where one finger touching a point in empty space okay. and, and, and creating a much more power just from that. So there's actually, you know, it's, it's a ridiculous, it's, so it's not the support of the railing that is, that is, that is giving us the, uh, that it is the meeting, the engagement yeah. with the thing, which creates, it activates our internal power. It reminds us that, oh, I got this, you know, yeah, you and uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, if you're, if you, um, if you do make some of those notes and you find any exercises that we should go over again. Okay. I haven't, I haven't actually gone through all those. I'm busy enough with the, with the new stuff that I, uh, I haven't really done a, a full review of the of the stuff you know we've accumulated well, over the last if you're done, but a lot of you do you do have to repeat this stuff and you find stuff oh yeah no aha uh -huh. you know yeah yeah I, I get it now i didn't get it then but i get it now beautiful you know so anyway if you have suggestions about things that we should look at again as you review this okay. yeah and, and that goes for all of you if any anybody says hey you know this thing we did back then you know i, I could sure stand a little review on that now yeah. and then we can well, I'll uh, tell you what i got so far Great trick, terrific. Okay, um, Richard. Um, the, you know, sometimes the uh, concept is elusive. And I remember back, way back, to when we spent a lot of time trying to different, differentiate between reaching and pushing. And the same thing, the same thing applies now to the elbow and reaching with the elbow. It's hard to reach or to try to open instead of pushing with the elbow. Uh, so, I mean, you're not necessarily even pushing against anything, but, you know, sometimes it's just latching on to the right concept. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we did a, a class on that one time. And it might be worth going going over again the differentiating between reaching and pushing because it uh, it has everything to do with the intent. You know that is, reaching seeks to make a connection, pushing gets gets rid of it. It creates distance, and and reaching establishes a connection. So that it's a Two different energies, and um, it might be worthwhile going over that again. 
Scott, you had something. Well, I was just going to mention to the people that weren't don't weren't there or don't remember. We were when we were in Sedona. We actually had one person pushing on the air and six or eight people pushing on them. <laughs> and, they, and and you know we all did it and it was it was amazing. You were just you know it, it was like pushing it was, on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It it, 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 the, your, the ability yeah. to withstand, uh, you know, uh, all that force just by making contact at one point in space, you know, was was really remarkable. So yes, thank you for yeah. that. Good, good. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, cool. So let's. Uh, we, don't have, we only have five minutes left. Um, let's see. Uh, Lynn. So you had us do the, the sinking to connect and strengthen and feel more confident at the beginning of this class, right? Yes. And then you said, let's take that into the um, reclaiming last, ter last territory. Right. right. Um, was there a particular connection that you wanted to articulate emphasize, about yeah. that moving from the one to the other? Because um, I thought you were going to say something more about that and then you didn't. So was I making assumptions or is there something you want to say about using the one and then moving into the... That, that's, a, that's a great uh, great point there. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I should uh, mention a little bit more about it. So the... One of the things that keeps coming up and people who are unable to do this stuff to the to their satisfaction, uh, particularly people, you know, uh, not, I'm not going to even generalize. It's, it's, it's pretty common that it is a lack of confidence in your legs that causes you to clench your hip joints, your butt muscles, tighten up your lower back, all those things that causes that so that you can't really appreciate the full benefit of Sun Kwa if you do not trust your legs. So since most of us are moving toward more efficient ways of living where we're not actually using our legs, nearly as much as we once did. We want to, we want to, and even, even people who do things where they're doing a lot of work with their legs, they're running, they're biking, whatever. It's still a young impulse, right? That there's a, it's that push away, push away, push away. So it's different between reaching and, and pushing, right? So even if you're biking, there's a, you're pushing on those pedals. It's a, you know, you're walking, whatever. So, it's an entirely different state of mind to embrace the yin aspect, the yin power of Sung. And so in, uh, in the case here, if, you know, let's say I'm, I'm going to my right leg and if I want to release down and really feel really confident that I am in that right leg, and that I can really empty out my left so that I can do that, I need to feel that this has the power to do that. And most of us do, but most of us don't really trust it. And so what'll happen is you go down and there's a trying to keep the, the hips want to stay tight because they're a little bit afraid of getting it, so you kind of lean over to the side and your body kind of goes like that. And whatever, whatever, you lean forward, whatever it is, or you lean backwards, something you're tensing up to rather than just ah, releasing down and being able to turn very nice and easily and really trust that leg so that you can you can be able to do cool stuff with it, right? You're, you're able to ah, feel, feel like you've got 
Kung Fu. So the, uh, the exercise where we're going down and then coming up again is different than the, the Sung exercise from the, from the uh, Reclaiming Lost Territory exercises, the Kwa exercise where we're not coming up. We're going down, we're Sung, and we're turning while remaining Sung. And that's where the power comes in. So uh, the exercise I, I showed at the beginning of class was strictly to improve your muscle tone in a yin way, which is very different. You know, I, I, I mentioned before, we you know, had one guy in, in class who used to be able to, to um, squat 800 pounds. You know, he was like a power lifter and he just, you know, had this huge, but he couldn't do the yin stuff. And he was almost in tears because it was, it was, he did not have the muscles trained to be able to go to the yin place. He had all this young energy, but, but whenever it, you know, he said he was like, he was sore for days from, from just being, a, just standing there and little old ladies would be next to him and like, hey, what's your, what's your problem there, big fella? And, uh, <laughs> and he was, uh, you know, he, he was uh, having a lot of trouble because it, he did not develop that yin power. So what we're developing in this, in the Taiji is that soft power. And that's, uh, so doing that exercise, you know, start with like, and what would you do today? We did like three on each leg with the three positions, three, three reps, you know, and it doesn't matter how many reps, cause you're going to do it until you, you feel like that's enough for today. And then you, uh, you do it again. Don't overdo it because then you won't want to do it the next day. And then, you know, then where, where's the fun in that? You know, we want to keep it, uh, keep it so that, Hey, this is okay. That, you know, maybe I'll do it three times a day. You know, maybe I'll do three reps, three times a day, each leg. Okay, good. And, and then it's, you're going to be building up your legs. And so that a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, when all your peers are getting old and decrepit, you're going to be climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and you say, Hey, what's a big deal? You know, you got nothing here. All right, <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for like what else is possible. We keep uh, we keep saying keep up in the ante, and uh, you know, see what uh, see what we can do with this thing. See what uh, you know. We're not restricted by the limitations that we have had in the past. Richard, you had something. Richard, I was just thinking that that the knee exercises that we're learning now are the opposite of deep knee bends. Yes. Yes, they, 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 they kind of are. Deep, deep, yeah, deep knee bends are not good for you. These are great for you. The thing is, though, if you do it this way, you can go all the way down. You can do what would, you know, you can cover the same territory as a deep knee bend, but you're absolutely right. If you, if your knees are pushing out as you're going down, you're stretching out those, those tendons in the, in the knees and you're going to have problems. So, but this will keep you by the fact that you've got the, uh, the knee vertical over, over the foot is going to allow you to just use that to, to, uh, transfer energy rather than use it as a source of the, of the, of the effort. So I think that's a, uh, uh, that's a valuable thing there. So yes, it will. Oh, that's the other thing. Thank you, Richard, for mentioning that this, I do believe will rehabilitate your knees. I've got torn meniscus in both my knees and, and I've been doing this and I got to say, you know, it, it's not bothering me anymore. I uh, didn't need sur you know, I needed surgery, but uh, but I, uh, I I chose to do this route rather than do that. And I, I don't have any. There's no uh, there's no pain. There's no swelling that that I had uh, you know uh, you know six months ago. So uh, uh, 
I, I believe it is a, a good way to strengthen, rehabilitate, and also if you're working that, particularly that straight down one, that's going to work your vastus medialis, which is a major, major uh, muscle for supporting your knee. So all that stuff works. You have some one more thing there, Richard? No, no, okay, cool. No one else? Oh, Scott does, okay. Um, yeah, we mentioned this before uh, before in the pregame, but um, highly recommend when you're doing that exercise, use a mirror. And I found out that I was arching my back and leaning forward, especially as I got, as I did more reps and got tired, I was cheating. So definitely try it in a mirror for a while. Good, mirror's good. Also, um, video yourself. Yeah. Most of us got these little smartphones, just stick it on a chair, press the, press the record button and, and 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 go and just you know check yourself from an from a side view and see where you are uh, you know where you're doing it you know where 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 it's good where it's bad and that way you can you can raise the your own game just by looking at it and the beautiful thing about that is no one else has to know you know <laughs> you can it's just you you know <laughs> shh and you you can work on it and you're just getting feedback which your you know your body will often lie so you often need a that external view that says oh oh really yeah like scott says i'm arching my back and leaning forward so i you don't want that cool thank you all so much this has been great love you thank all you. thank you maria thank, thank you maria. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Thanks, Maria.